Time for Winter Beater Update with Jim. How's it going, buddy? Oh, Long really time. good. Yeah, no, it's been quite a while. It's been too long, yeah. yeah Everybody's yeah. so busy. Into the new year. Jim's nice new Dodge truck crapped out, so looks like you're back on the old reliable. Here. Yeah, yeah, no old faithful here. How's she doing? Oh, very good, yeah. It's yeah. got a bit of an intermittent uh, voltage regulator deal, but uh, apart from that, no yeah. good heat. Hammer along. Looks yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, 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 lots of heat. Everything all polished except for my roof. Oh yeah. Waiting for paint. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that polish, hey? It did shine up. I thought it looked better than it did. Yeah. Oh yeah. What a sweet. Doors just barely. Oh, we're right to the rafters there. Just jammed. But I got some lights in, put one nice light over top of the engines. Oh wow, it is well lit in here. For a change. Look at this place, yeah. There's the comfort there. Yeah, I haven't even seen this thing polished up. Holy shit. Oh yeah, go look at the passenger the side. See? So there's Oh, the, that's the guy there. That's the, the damage there. But oh yeah, that's a... That's a pretty healthy pit. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a bit of a divot there. <laughs> I think we're going to need You'll to do something. replace some. your divots. Um, yeah, those other holes look quite nice. The rest of them are really nice. And the one next to it, which was stuck, is also quite good. Really oh, quite good. that's unreal. Yeah, didn't it shine up, eh? Original paint? That's amazing. Yeah, so this side is fully finished, more or less. Oh, yeah. I haven't touched this fender. There's no point yeah. polishing it if I'm going to be banging it out and possibly yeah, painting yeah. it. Well, is it just from people leaning on it here, this yeah, sheen? It's just, or yeah, it's just, just a, a lean sheen. Yeah. Uh, even the roof cleaned up, not bad. Yeah. And the, oh, uh, the hood. Yeah. Remember how chalky that was? Yeah, Look yeah. Look at how much paint there still is. Unreal. Yeah. Oh, well, his pinstripe really came back to life, too. A lot too, of it, right? yeah, I was really, I didn't get very close to it. Yeah. Like, There's but, just uh, the one stripe on the top, then. Yeah, because yeah, it's the base. Ah. I think the fancy ones had two stripes. And now that it cranks over, though, uh, oh, anything man. can happen. What yeah. a fantastic car. Well, if we can get this thing running, that'll be all the difference, because yeah. then it's on the road this year. Yeah, because then it's just wheel cylinders yeah. and the, the, and the, the whole kit. Look at that, the other I'm thing. I'm just going to buy the whole kit. No, the that's the like, beauty of this, is that it's, it's like not Tires junk. and a couple of soft It needs tune-up stuff. So Continental pushed out in the snow or what? Hey, no, no, it's just sitting next to the uh, the Dodge there yeah. now waiting his turn. Oh, good, waiting his turn. Waiting his turn. A, uh, yeah. I've just been hopping project to yeah, project. Yeah, I know. They have that 56 Beetle in there now. And oh, so, yeah, I want to come over and play show yeah, and tell one of these days. Take a look. Uh, well, you let I've me know what day it works because. Taking all some of the dents out of it. Oh, yeah. Trying to give it the Scott treatment of just wet sanding it. Yeah. Well, this is just how long it's been going, but I had to rebuild the new wheel cylinders I put on it oh nine years God. ago. You got it that long. Well, yeah, it's been restored that long. Or yeah, like yeah, that's what up. I mean. You fixed it all up. And yeah, I fixed it up it and drove it nine years ago, and then it sat since then. That's a part <laughs> cry different from your Maserati engine. Oh, right. Just like, a... well, I got to get that thing going too because those cars don't like sitting around either. Mm. Like, you got to fire those up every year. Yeah, too. right. Yeah, so Running summer, on jack stands. Well, this like summer Ferris it's uh, it's coming out of there and going next door. Oh yeah. As soon as the rover's done, that's going in for paint. How's, is the rover getting? Let's have a look. To... The oh, rover, the doors are open and everything anyway. So oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I took this around the block. Rear end's oh, a total sweet. success. Excellent. Oh, look at this. Yeah, scrap I put a little in. scrap time in. Yeah, oh, I got the front man. piece on, just the middle one to go. So I was hoping yeah, to do yes. that before I come over to your place. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wasn't pestering you this week. I didn't have time. Oh, that looks. But that piece is good, right? That'll be no. fine. Oh yeah. And uh, that takes care of the worst of it. And once we put that little one at the top, then it's just hammer time and then it's yeah. going on. The worst is done, which yeah. is getting this kind of sorted out. Yeah, so, that hamburger area is Yeah, the right. hamburger areas are looking better than the rest of it now. So yeah. all right, let's hear it go, buddy. Yeah. Winter beats action. Yeah, <laughs> oh, she's all shined up. Reliable speed.
<laughs> Too easy. Too good, yeah. Too easy, buddy. Take care, boss. Okay, Dan and I are going to load the Chevy cylinder head into Dan's car and he's going to soak it at work for me. Let me get this car. You thought it was just rusty, but it was rusty and oily. Yeah. Wait, there we go. Frank is so excited. Are you excited to move a cylinder head? Are you excited to move a cylinder head? That came out easy here? Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, it's not bad. No, it's more about not having to do it clean clothes, right? Oh, no. Yeah. I'll get, uh, I'll get some of the guys to work to help me. Yeah. Paul. Oh, Paul's not there. Um, I don't know, somebody will be there. Okay, thank you so much, man. Yeah. Yeah, you you guys have a great afternoon. Congrats on your cat. I'll have to come see that anyway. Yeah. Okay, come on, Menace. Probably good enough, hey? Eh? A little bit more. Okay, we're gonna try, try to take the hood off here. Hold on, you know what? Just, let's just fold it. So it is yeah. undone. Yeah. Oh, okay. How much free play room do you have? I don't know. I don't know anything about how this goes. I think what we're going to have to do is I'm just have to lie under there, and you're going to have to run this until we get it up. Yeah, I'm not desperate to lie underneath it. No, I'll be lying underneath in the mud guy. Oh, well, we are live. Okay. Live at Filth Town. Live at the bottom of your filthy car. We're live from the bottom of the Chev. And the pan is out. And... As much fun as expected. It's really all good news. I'm going to stick the camera here. See if we can see the camshaft. Cam cam. There we go. So, compared to the Buick, this is like coming down the assembly line. This is mint. Better news than expected everywhere, really. Cam is excellent. No sign of rust anywhere. I don't see any antifreeze damage on anything. So that's great news. And then we'll have a quick look at the pan here. We may have to push it an inch, but so much room now. Oh. Turn your wheels and buy even more room. Yep. Inch of room there. 
Like a guy needs more buildings for storage or something. Yeah. Guy, what a guy needs is more car projects yeah. to try and do it once. Six is not enough. Yeah. Hey, that's good news. Man, we actually did it. We got the pan out and we got the tea out and we got tea back in. There we go. Look at that little system. Isn't that cool? Intricate oiling. So where is it? That the hole there is where this the one here is output. Feeds. Output from the pump, and yeah. then it goes through all this octopus bullshit here. Like I guess it'd be Some a, a, hex, a hextopus because yeah. there's only six. And we're off to Dan's to get the cylinder head. And it's a lovely evening for a drive. So let's go. We gotta watch out for Nikki the dog. Hi, Nikki. Are you excited? <laughs> All right, we're at Dan's. We got the cylinder head back in the truck here. Cleaned mm -hmm. up pretty good, right? Yeah, it really did. Right. And uh, good. Well, we got some work to do here. Yeah, I didn't take all that shit off. No, it's right, not but... meant to. It's just meant to get the oil and grease and but paint. But like, look at how nice it is. Oh yeah, right? it's all that awesome. shit's off, right? Yeah, yeah oh, that works really good. Thanks for doing the all the heat cooling passages and everything. <laughs> oh, look at that though, eh? Yeah. Some bad news out of the cleaner. Crack. It's crack. It's probably a pretty common problem. So we'll have to see if we can find one of those. There's some paint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's paint. That's uh, fun. Well, I guess uh, I'm going to have to pull the manifold off. All right. Well, that's awesome. And I've got the... They got the thermostat housing. T stat housing. Yeah. Great. Guys, plies, check, check. <laughs> got that, yeah, check. Got, Use battery, got, check. Oh, uh, yeah. S yeah. Straps covered in <laughs> rust, yeah. check. Yeah. Won't work next time you use them, check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ramps that don't do anything, check. Yeah. Okay, we are back from Dan's with the cylinder head all tidied up here. And uh, now that we've discovered this uh, crack in the manifold, uh, I guess we're going to pull those off. So I'm not going to panic about trying to weld it up or get it repaired. These are not rare engines at all. And uh, I'm going to just pull it apart and try and find one. Somebody might know better, but my guess is that this heat riser was stuck closed. And they were probably driving the car uh, in, a, in an overheat situation. So this area would have been getting very hot. And uh, that's my guess, anyway. That's what I'm hoping. I'm really only hoping that there's no uh, damage to the uh, to the head itself. All right, let's get in there. Pulling the studs out here. Yep. That's okay. Okay, well, I hope I don't regret taking it all off in one piece instead of taking and separating them first, but uh, I don't think it'll make too much difference. thing would have been not running very well or happily. Let's get some carnage cam here. Starting at the front here. That is obviously not right. Probably wasn't sealing very well. Intake looks good. Exhaust looks like it might have been blowing out there. Intake again okay. Here's the suspect exhaust port, and I don't think you can see it was sealing around here, and then it looks like it was just literally blowing right out of here. So that's garbage. And here we see another good intake seal, and what looks like a pretty good exhaust seal at the back there, but I would say that it was probably starting and running if these intake ones were sealing, but 
stuff was not right. Like, I don't know how that ended up like that. That looks like an installation mistake. I don't know. So, we'll be getting all this. Glad that we decided to pull it apart. Dean was right. There was no way you were going to use any of that. So, we'll scrape all this stuff off and then we're going to pull. We'll separate these two. So, this would be the time to really get serious about looking for cracks in this head because if we're ever going to find a cracked head, it would be this one. Just judging by the amount of abuse that it's taken here. We'll have another quick look underneath. It's definitely got a low spot in it right there. I'm going to have to move it, I'm pretty sure. It's not cracked that I can see, but I can feel it. So we'll have to put it up on the mill and measure it. <laughs> Some of these uh, valve seats don't look awesome. There's a lot of cleaning to do here, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on this and then find out it was cracked. So we're going to look pretty carefully. It's plenty rusty enough to hide a crack around an exhaust seat or something. So we're going to start with the bad, bad guys here. Maybe a little wire brush on a die grinder just to have a look around. All right, well, we've got the suspect manifold off. Broke one stud here, but I'm not going to worry about the studs until we see what we can get. If the other manifold, if whatever we find has good studs, then I'll be glad I didn't waste any time. There's one of the ones that came out and you can see it's neck down pretty bad in the middle there, so as soon as we put any torque on it. This one came out, but it's, its neighbor here didn't, so I'm going to sort that and that'll be... That's in here, so... It's not going to be super fun to deal with, but I think we can save the intake manifold. I don't know what that is in there. Can you see that? Something's fishy in there. I don't know what it is. Weird. I don't know. It just seems to be some kind of coiled up piece of wire. I don't think it's a spring. If it ever was. I don't know. It, it could even be some something right from the factory. I have no idea. That's enough to get started on the actual head, so I think we'll start with some some cleaning and uh, make sure that this thing can be saved. I'm going to just very quickly hit it with a file and see if I'm right about the low spots here. So, hmm, you can see that I have yet to take the dirt off of here and maybe a little low in there, but if I'm looking for a real smoking gun, I'm not finding it here. Closest we found is that stock heat riser. You know, wouldn't be the first engine that was uh, ruined by something so simple as a rusted uh, heat riser. Pretty decent and not as bad as I had feared in this area. But definitely, definitely something. Maybe we'll try and get a feeler gauge under it. Uh, so I've just been uh, trying to get the last of the, the uh, intake and exhaust manifold gaskets off of here. This is all machined in one pass at the factory. So I thought if we took a block here and we gave her a little of this that we should find that it would take the rest of that gasket off. But you can see what's happening. It's just touching here, here, and here, and not here on the hot exhaust manifold sections. So uh, another interesting and not necessarily good thing is that you see these uh, little, I think they're copper, these copper uh, uh, inserts here are to help seal there. And uh, these work with the uh, asbestos sandwich gaskets to get a good seal. Like that. And uh, I thought I dropped one because this one's missing and it's not in here. But if you look, the amount of crud and carbon there says that that one has not been there for a long time. These ones you can clearly see. That one never had one, never had one here. Or at least hasn't had one since the engine was last run. That's two more problems with the head here. So I'm going to pop these out. I don't know if we can get new ones, probably it's a Chev, and then probably have to take this stud out, and then we're going to skim this face as well. 
Easy enough. Oh, they have a split in them. That one's low, so skim probably only going to have to take five thou, but that'll tighten that up. I don't want to do this stuff twice. Valve guides are primo on this engine. Uh, again, low miles, so no matter what is uh, wrong with it, uh, it's still way less work to fix this than to try and salvage one with a bunch of miles on it. Okay, next is uh, get in here and get all the rust out of these, especially these two. Look for cracks. If we don't find anything, we'll, uh, we'll start thinking about how we're going to uh, salvage this. Okay, little mini fragers, back to work, eh? I would say that that is very much improved and uh, even the very badly rusted one more or less looks fine. Obviously the valve seats especially here and here are quite bad. Uh, the rest of them will clean up with just the very lightest touch and these a little more and uh, great. Let's see uh, this surface here we're probably going to plane. Got a very good datum plane here. Uh, so we will block the head up on this machine surface here. To assuming there's no reason to believe that this isn't perfectly parallel to the uh, underside. So it would actually be very ridiculous if it wasn't. And uh, this end here looking very good and clean. Very little signs of paint. It must have all come off in the bath, so probably no harm in giving it a little paint. I guess we'll clean this guy up. No reason to believe there's anything wrong with that other than the stud. That, uh, yeah, we'll just keep looking for one. I have no doubt that we'll find one. Meanwhile, I'm going to take the Krosky crew over here, uh, over to the wire wheel and start wheeling. Mini Frankers is going to have a nap because she's very tired. I did uh, all the valve springs and little bits and pieces there yesterday. They're all mint, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, well this is a treat. This is uh, half of the uh, rocker shaft assembly for the Chevy 216 and it looks uh, like it's fairly easy to service. There's actually some keys here and I'm betting that that I can pull a key or two and maybe just fire all this shit off one end and clean everything and put it back together. Um, I don't see any way to clean it well enough without uh, disassembling it. So let's just give that a go. Cave Rangers, we have to take apart the uh, rocker shafts here. This is a really uh, a shot for the ages here. I should have grabbed some pliers before we started the camera going maybe. But since I didn't, I wondered, what's the wrong tool that was in that's nearby? Shit. Pin spring. Da -da -da. I'm trying to do this without having to. Um, what's the word? Think, I guess. I don't want to have to start from scratch on all the valve adjustments and stuff. It's probably going to be a bit out because we're going to be grinding the valves. Everything will be tight. Some of them will float or whatever. But. I like to, you know, if you put it together and you're out by a quarter of an inch, you have a problem if you put everything in the same place. 
I almost didn't do this because this is like a monumental amount of like organizational, uh, you know, capabilities for me and I'm just not up to it. That's uh, half of the rocker shaft cleaned and uh, now I'm going to just uh, very quickly put it back together. <sighs> okay, this is where you're glad. <clears throat> you have the other one. So that is the back half there. So this starts here. Do, do. So that starts there. That's the closed end. It's that end. Right. So spring goes this way. There is very minor wear on the shaft, but it's insignificant. How could we not do that? That was just designed to be worked on. So how it came apart. These two go together here. Well, that was fun. These are ready to go back on. So one more thing off the list, I guess. Dean Watch Review is always worth a listen. Wow, you got like super old Dean watches. Has similar taste in watches to a magpie. <laughs> look at how shiny they are, Dean. Oh, they're, they're, look, <laughs> he's, got he's got special tools for Well, we do encourage all different ways of getting rid of your worthless fiat currency. Whoa. So uh, it's time for another installment of Timepiece Appreciation Night with our friend Mark again, Buick enthusiast and patron of the show, and uh, fellow sad bastard collector. <laughs> yeah. We have tonight some pretty spectacular stuff. I'm going to endeavor not to touch anything. So, mm -hmm. okay, give us a quick rundown. All right, so this guy there. is from 1779, and it is a Verge Fusée made in London. And it's in original condition. It hasn't been pulled apart in probably about 150 years. And right, it's and we're not having happy. trouble getting parts for like a Taurus. Yeah, <laughs> you just try and All find right. parts for this puppy. And, oh, and everybody's like, oh, 70, what? Oh, I had a 1779, but it's not the yeah. get different marker lights. <laughs> Sorry. Right. It's not quite the same. <laughs> From the time when people were smart. Yeah, you know, like, how in the heck, you know? Right? Like, yeah. So you're saying, sorry, chain chain drive. That's chain just... drive, yeah. There's a little tiny chain that runs between the mainspring and the fusée that equalizes the pressure from the mainspring out over the watch so that it runs um, the full length of the chain at the same speed. It's uh, That's how they compensated for it. They, they couldn't build that's a spring that worked right. crazy. But there you can see the... Uh, it's wrapped around. And yeah. You, you wind the watch up yeah. actually using the fusée. Oh, okay. Show us the engraved top again. That's just Holy outrageous. Man. Look at that. 
Sorry, what does it say on it there? I think it's Richards. That's the maker. That's the maker, yeah. Well, it's in a pair case. So what's what's called a pair case is two silver Look cases. Look at that. <laughs> Man, what the hell? Yeah, like, you know? like why? Yeah, this is mind blowing stuff. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it's. Is it gonna run? Oh, we can get her going. Oh yeah, there unbelievable. We go. It's a little gummy. It, it probably hasn't been cleaned in about 150 years. Just pull the carbon out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I'm seeing this though. Like this. Wow. Yeah, that is absolutely like, crazy. What a beautiful thing. She just. Yeah. She's, so, how do you find <clears throat> parts for that? Holy you don't. <laughs> yeah. So it even, has the, it even has the original bullseye crystal on it still. This one is typical high usage. On the back side you can see lots of blow through here. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a piece of copper welded in inside. Holy cow. It was done about 150 years ago. So that's that, that one. That is absolutely amazing. That one is and 1839. It's also English, and it's also a fuse, but it's called an English lever, so it's an upgraded design. And that one is running and on time. It's got a I'll silver dial, and this guy came to me, I got it in Victoria, actually in Sydney, in a jewelry shop. And when I looked at it, it was all black, and the hands were twisted up, and I was arguing with the shopkeep, the jeweler, and um, you know, so I got it for really cheap. And while I was, while my my uh, my debit card was being processed, I untwisted the hands and it took off. <laughs> so pretty happy about that. Wow. Cases are made of st sterling silver. Oh my god! Okay, okay that's the cover. Yeah. Not as elaborate as the other yeah. one. Still, and it's signed. Yep, yeah, it's signed. There's London on it again. Yeah, so it's Lon it's it's a London it's, like, it's a London watch. You can tell by um, it's like T H W I T H Snod Snodworth Shop. Yeah, I can't remember who it was. Snod Snodsworth or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, London made London Still made watch. Still pretty fancy engraving. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a keeper, man. You might want to hang on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Dean's watch appraisal. Good thing they were here. Yeah. He gives it a wow, you should hold on yeah, to yeah. that. <laughs> so that's that's an American made Rockford. About eighteen eighty nine. And it's in what you call a hunter case. And what's the significance of that? It's, it's not basically open. that it's got a lid. Right. Okay, yeah. so you Hunter's have, lid. You have to open it. To you have it. to open it, and the, and the uh, winder is on the 3 o'clock position as opposed to... Oh, okay, not a 12. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's another one that I built from a piece of junk, basically. You think it's this thing going, eh? Yeah. What? This is great. Need to watch the design. It's a lot more geometric. A lot less flowery. On yeah, the, just on the. It's very Art Nouveau. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, good. The 1890s. Well, Rockford was a was a high end maker. I mean, they didn't make too many of these. The company was out of business by about 1915. They were pretty high end, high jewel watches. I think this is a 17 jewel. That yeah. is really amazing. And what is the what's this adjustment on the right there? That's to regulate the speed. So yeah. you know if it's gaining time or losing time. Right. So you can just regulate it and. And what does it do? Uh, it, it just moves the hairspring. Yeah. To either shorten it or yeah. lengthen it. Okay. Yeah. So the, the so that the it'll go faster yeah. or slower. Okay. Cool. And that one's running pretty good. Pretty it's much. Eh? Pretty much on time. I can't read it here. Um, I think that one is just uh, RW Company, Rockford, Illinois. Rockford, Illinois. So can you fix yes. other people's watches and stuff too? If oh, yeah. you, oh, good. That's yeah. good. Dean has a really nice watch collection. Mm -hmm. I got a couple. Yeah, wow. Well, they're from like the 80s, but they're, they're, <laughs> they're Seiko's from the 80s. Seiko? Yeah. Well, yeah, we can fix those. Yeah. Might need as long as there's a movement. I mean, if it's a battery, well, yeah, they can fix batteries, but the thing is they usually oh. only, they only, they only go for about two battery cycles and then they blow up. And then Beautiful. the last pocket watch, this is a high-end Waltham. Waltham. Um, wow. I, don't know I think much. that's about 1902. And that's a railroad grade, oh, and that's a Canadian. Right. This is a and that's a Canadian heart. dial, because it has a 24-hour register on it. The Americans. Oh, it never doesn't have that. what time the liquor store opens. <laughs> yeah. It's got a big red four on it. Eh? There you go. <laughs> All right, good, good. 
And that's well, another, another very cool. But you restored it, or yeah, something? another recent recent junk pile that I bought. Look so at that! How in the hell? Twenty-one jewel Waltham. Oh my god! And that is rail grade, so that's the best of the best. I guess it was seeing how beautifully done they are on the guts that really blew me away. You know? Yeah. Like when you see that this has nothing to do with making this thing keep time. It's just to show off. That's all it was, yeah. That's it's cool. Gorgeous. And that's what I like about it. Oh uh, yeah. It's just style for the sake of style. Just to say you could. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. Okay, welcome. Welcome. That's a good start. An mm -hmm. auspicious start for the new show, <laughs> Mailing It In, with me and Dave. Tonight, Mailing It In, it's uh, people mail us stuff, and then we get to mail in a part of the show. <laughs> this is actually from France. Okay, <laughs> it's from France. <laughs> okay. That always bodes well. From Dusty Spring Busted. <laughs> oh, Stuart, Stuart Nemo. Nemo. Okay. Oh, Paris. that's great. Stuart Nemo is a patron of the show <laughs> and has uh, been, uh, you know, shown multiple incidents of bad judgment in supporting the show and donating things to it. So, uh, Stuart has included a very kind note and uh, thank you very much, man. Uh, what? What is it? Oh my god, that's fucking awesome. Look, Look at it, eh? Uh, kind of looks like me. <laughs> looks a bit like my grandpa, actually. He had that kind of, kind of shoulders, you know, the drooped shoulders. Look at it, it's a T. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, Menace dog. Really, you super impressed your face <laughs> with a woman that looks like my great grandma. <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Maybe I just look too good there. Hey. Eh? That's, That's about crazy. how proud I look of things, right? It's perfectly good. Thank That's you, buddy. That's amazing. That's uh, <laughs> extremely kind. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much for the letter. <laughs> if those were like placemats at my funeral, hey, <laughs> 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 everybody, you know, just grab some dip. <laughs> you sit down, and there'd be like all these, and people would be like, "I didn't know he was married to a putterite." <laughs> Thank you so much, Stuart. And we're on to, who's this from, man? <laughs> Dylan Miller. Cheers, buddy. Where is oh, he? No. Ardmore, Oklahoma. That's me. Oh, right oh he's different than Ardmore. Ardmore. I'm Ardmore. Like, this is like Ardmore. It already looks pretty good. <laughs> <cool. laughs> oh, this. come on. That is so cool. Look at that. You gotta love this. Look, look at that. that. Thank you, Dylan. Here's a few items to add to the library. Maybe. Wow. Isn't that a good Help with the old tea. It's oh, and team. extensive congratulations from Dylan to Dean on his Edsel. Oh, right Thank right. you, buddy. That's well, awesome. What do we got, Dave? Okay, we got the Nash <laughs> Technical Handbook and the Tire Facts about the early Model T Ford. Incredible stuff. Look, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at the condition of this thing. What year do you think? Oh, it's got to be 19. Well, it says 37 through 42, so it's got to be like really? War, literally World War II era. Yeah. Look at that, eh? Look at this. Uh, oh, that's nice. Look at all the stuff. Look at this. Super Wonderful. handy. Wow. A who's who. Tire yeah. facts. Yeah. That, that is cool. Wow. Thank <laughs> you very much. What a, that's actually what a great that's thing nice to get stuff. in the mail. Really? Oh, yeah. Table so of tire facts. Mm. I, I kind of I admit I may have under researched that part of the project a bit. <laughs> By phoning and going, hey, have you got the cheap Model T tires? And they're like, yeah, I got lots. I'm like, hit me. That was that was about as far as I got on tire facts for that baby. I remember this book in the 70s in the libraries. Yeah, it's Floyd Clymer at the, he, he, he print, I think he did it like in 1952 or something. And I remember oh, seeing cool. this. I have not seen that book in years. Floyd Clymer's Floyd latest yeah, yeah. book. Yeah. Cool. What a band, a blueprint oh. to build. A depot hack oh, body. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Check out these blueprints for a depot hack body. Look at that. So, 
Photocopies of blueprints are available in the store for 10 bucks a page. No, we're just kidding. Look at all the yeah, they're kind of like, it's like one of these, you know, kind of just make it like that. And, you know, you'll get the numbers when you get there. And then, uh, you know, just put her together. That's cool. That's really Isn't cool. That Isn't the neatest yeah. fucking thing? I've never seen one of those. I want to do one here. All right, All right here we go. Oh, Look. <laughs> Mark Palmer. You guys know Mark Palmer <laughs> as the unknown poet on I the think channel. I think he's on walking or something. Look at that. Hey, nice. Oh, sweet. This is perfect. Hey, hey. Huh. Huh. Dude, we'll hang that up, buddy. Thank you. This mark has also included a very nice note. Thanks very much, buddy. It's very kind. We will have that up. That is cool. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> oh, this is heavy, man. This one's full of sand. Oh, it's like a, it's like a mark coming. This one's from Mr. Donald E. Pordon, or Porton, <laughs> in P E Q U A N N Bach, Pecanic, New, New Jersey. Oh, Pecanic. Pecanic, uh, New Jersey. Sorry. Pecanic. Pecanic. Out of 73 Pecanic. <laughs> the Christmas show was profane. <laughs> this thing, what have we been scraping the driveway with this piece of shit? Oh, look at this. Oh, man, I have, oh my god. Oh, wow. This is from Brady. Oh, we need, we need some more music. Somebody. It just got more complicated. <laughs> George is just like, this guy is absolutely crazy. What is going on? Okay, what, are the, what is actually going on? Like, there's a lot of tape. Holy cow. There you go. There you go, right? Wow. So from, from our buddy Don Porton, uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for the kind letter, buddy. That's awesome. Look at that. Stay well. Cheers, man. Check it out, you guys. Clockwise here, uh, the entire set of motors, auto repair manuals from 1937, 53, 65, all the way from 71 to 77. That covers everything worth knowing about, yeah? <laughs> They're just great. Other than the Gutenberg Bible. First edition, hey? Or the two and all funny <laughs> parts. <laughs> Let's just have a looky. Savor the yellowiness. <laughs> oh, look at amazing. This is going to be me someday. Brave Dynaflow Explorer. Mechanics must have looked at these back in the days and went, what in the fuck? <laughs> Why would we ever want this in a car? <laughs> you know? They're like, oh, well, here's just measure the thrust to <laughs> fucking uh, pilot bearing pressure at the... Uh, Little uh, blade feathering feedback valve there. Yeah, right? People get that. Yeah, gears mm -hmm. and out there. Mm -hmm. I love all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice tr Oh! Mm -hmm. It's gonna be handy. <laughs> all your basic Chevy knowledge right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, we're gonna have fun. First year of the Power Glide. 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there she is. There's the old girl, eh? 235. 3747. 216. Uh, yeah. 216. Could we get the late model? <laughs> That's cool. Well, we're going to have fun, uh, presumably, fixing that. Well, that arrived just in time. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at your ring gap okay. specs. <laughs> well, this is good. You got to save that. <clears throat> when the internet burns down, people will be paying me for this. Oh, I'll send you a picture of it. <laughs> nice. What's happening by 53? Right away you see a lot more nudity. <laughs> yeah, there's a set of right. motors. So. Right, a lot more color. Oh, right, start to see a lot of bold yeah, fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Somebody, you know, people, yeah, people used to know how to draw. All the stuff yeah. together, sure. Yeah, it's it's nice. commercial, yeah. Industrial art. Turbo glide. <laughs> Okay, another evolutionary like cul-de-sac on the yeah, path to automatic. Like Twenty porn. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, torque of flight. Uh, the French transmission. <laughs> In car repairs, eh? Just like take out of car. It's the only thing you can do. Look at it. Oh, that'll never, you know. You buy one of these things. People need to understand. You buy one of these cars 
this is what you're getting is a whole bunch of wore out old <laughs> leaky ass shit it's going to cost you a million dollars to fix it all and nobody knows how to do it so just buy a good one today on just buy a good one you do not want to fuck with all this stuff you're like oh i'll just uh, get that there's only 14 parts. No, i'm just kidding these are simple like, but you know, you got to get in there. <laughs> Look at all that. <laughs> I had another fucking. <laughs> Why did nobody come to the funeral? <laughs> That's a piece of cake. <laughs> oh, the bleak. Sorry. I'll get it done by one o'clock. Look at this thing. <laughs> Triple turbine. Oh my god. Triple trouble. Oh, it's cool, so yeah. <laughs> This is the thing, like, the guys doing this stuff for the first time, when you look at the Model T, and we built the whole car in about three hours, and it would take three hours just to get the fucking lid off of this thing. The, it, it varies the pitch of the blades inside the torque converter. Three different sets of blades. That's never going to be a problem. That's awesome, buddy. Wow. Oh, and of course, we forgot to show. Don has included, of course, the... Volkswagen 1200 mm -hmm. manual for Jim, which is awesome. Look at that. Quality, mm -hmm. quality printing. Mm -hmm. Very serious sans serif font. Mm -hmm. It's none of that <laughs> brome font in here. Font with the Landau irons on the T and stuff, eh? Font with such serifs that it has, that it has gusseted serifs. Serif jokes, eh? Who's all from Saskatchewan? That's the joke. You're from Saskatchewan. You think that's funny? People talk about. I didn't know about this, but I'm just naturally interested in fonts. You got a serious car for a serious person, Jim. Always so serious. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. Look at for Jim. I can't even bullshit him. You've got a, a J Corvette for Black Point, Nova Scotia. Careful, those people in Black Point are insane. <laughs> There we go. Look at this. Oh my goodness. There's a note from Jay Gorbett. Cheers, buddy. What is it? Yeah, it's, Holy it's like Carol? Like Carol 1 Deluxe Tobacco Tin. Tin Cigar. And, oh, so it's Holland. Holland. Okay, yeah, so cool. Dutch. There we go. There is a note. Oh, look at this. Best wishes to you and Frankers. From Jay Gorbett. Cheers, buddy. Found the tin in my father-in-law's shed. We bought the car. It's full of nails and screws. It appears to be Dutch cigars, according to Google. And a few treats for Frankers. Jay Gorbett. Cheers, buddy. Wow. Well, oh, that makes for a very happy Frankers. You guys are going to have to put Frankers on a diet here. <laughs> oh, we'll be very, very happy to put that on the classic dart set. Holy cow. Cheers, Alberta, buddy. We love classic tins and shit. I just love that shit. It's the so Dave Gould. Dave from Indianapolis Gould. Drive. He's from, uh, he's from the, 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 somewhere in the United Kingdom. <laughs> he's just fucking with us. <laughs> Nobody has an address like that. Oh, he, you know, I recognize yeah, South yeah, Wales. You know the English. Mm. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, it's, uh, like, it's like Sammy Maudlin here or something. Sorry, the okay. show is the blooper reel. Okay. <laughs> I what feel is? like I feel like Skip Bittman. Okay. Skip oh, Bittman. <laughs> Thumbs up if you get the Skip Bittman reference. Oh, hey, Skip. Fuck. Uh, sorry. Wow, more Volkswagen. That nice, is fantastic. What year do we think that is? Pre sixty. Very so nice. Is it uh, open? Dave's included a very kind note. Thank you so much, buddy. The mm. ABC of British cars hit me. Look at this. This Look is cool. This. Look at that. Very attractive car. Ah. Look at these. Oh my God. Bristol. Arnold Bristol. Wow. Bristol four hundred five. Yeah. There's a Dean car. Yeah, hey. okay. What do we got there? Hillman. Man, you need a Minx. <laughs> Tell me about it. Everybody needs a mix. Uh, Everybody's accounted for here. Wow. Triumph. There, that's the one I was thinking of. Sunbeam Rapier. Rapier. What a great looking little car. And oh, all kinds of details. 
<laughs> oh, look at that one. <laughs> the old Cresta. No, it's a Wesley 1550. Hey. I thought it was a 14. Oh, there were three of those on our street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I went to swimming lessons in the back of a no. Yeah, oh, did all the fear. I, I don't know if people the really. Oh, there was very few of those cars here. What year does this come from then? It's gotta be late 50s. It's gotta be. But that is absolutely awesome. Look, it's, it's two and six. Somebody in the comments is smarter than us and could very easily tell us what that uh, costs. Two and six. I love it. We just, that's yeah, like perfect. before my time. Yeah. That is so cool. Thank you very much, buddy. What a great collection. Nice Whoa. It's like elves. Huh. What, a, what a cute, uh, what a wonderful proportion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kids would, would have probably stuff. bought these and just stuck oh, sure. them inside their school sure, books sure. like yeah, me yeah, and just, just read. Look through them I got and, kicked you know, out of class cars. for reading car yeah, magazines yeah, yeah, yeah. every <laughs> day. Look at Bristol's. Yeah. Oh, this was a real treat. I'm so yeah, happy yeah. that somebody yeah. would save that and send it to us. That is so cool. Thank you very much, buddy. What a great collection. Must be inside. It's a mystery. Oh, look at all of that. Oh, we don't like this kind of thing at all. Is there a letter? Okay, good. So now we have a name. Hey, The Sheffield Cortina Center. Wow. Hi, Scott Frankers and the Agents. Here's a small donation for the library. You may find pages 18, 19, 20, and 44. Particularly interesting in the Motor Show magazine. <laughs> Thank you so much, buddy. We are very excited to have a look at this. 1959 Motor Show. Oh, I love it that they've just put everything in alphabetical order. So it's like, well, if you're not happy with the Oldsmobile, check out the Panarch. Um, if I'd seen that oh. car as a kid, I'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, look at Plymouth Fury. Chrysler's best uh, has unit body structure with eliminates test frame. More sculptured bumpers change the appearance, but tail fins are retained. <laughs> there it is. The magnificent 1960 Plymouth Fury. Ooh, or... <laughs> Man, that's just so remote, eh? Like, the odds of my family ever buying a Peugeot 403. A peerless. Pretty GT. close to zero, yeah. You might have bought a peerless. peerless. <laughs> oh, there's a punishment can. <laughs> love the love NSU. NSU. That's Peugeot. cool. My oh, lovely Oldsmobiles. Mm -hmm. Style is simplified for 1960 to give a less cluttered line, and the accent is on fuel economy. <clears throat> there is no shortage of performance. Wow, four speed automatic. That, I would love that car. Thank you so much, buddy. Multi cylinder. 350 American Club. Like another sans serif group. <laughs> <So I can't. laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Look at that. Non originality, sin or omission. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> but really, what we drive is here a car with various wrong items. By this, I do not mean thrush, exhaust, trick, paint, etc. <laughs> uh, uh, proper proper people. They're all Oh, wow. Not nice. That's actually a nice little story. Really nice. <laughs> Sometimes the yeah, uh, British ones see, tended yeah. to be a little more Very serious. Yeah. Like, well, that's Flash, eh? Look at the bass guy in the back. Neat. Having said this, I don't like customizing, period. Especially on old Yanks. <laughs> 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 any comments? <laughs> well, don't want any nonsense. An absolute gift, 400 pounds. Wow. Starlight Coupe, 950 pounds. Wow. 48 Cadillac Sedan, 3,000. 47 Continental Coupe. <laughs> Offers over 2,000 pounds. That's cool. I love it. It's a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit.
Do it. 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 Do it.